Hi, it's the first day of winter 2011. I'm Peter Martinson and this is your weather report. Right now, a lot of people around the world are reeling from gigantic storms. One, snowstorm Joachim, which struck Western Europe uh, over the weekend. Another gigantic blizzard, which hit the southwestern plains of the United States over the past two days. And a third, which just uh, ran through uh, the Philippines, tropical storm Washi, which killed over 600 people in the Philippines from flooding, wind damage, etc. And it's right now the most deadly storm on record for 2011. Now, as usual, the British Empire is striving to blame these storms and the rest of the intense weather events over the past months and years on man-made global warming. In British language, it's the fault of human progress. Of course, the whole story is bunk, but there's one aspect that both the British warmists and the sane deniers agree on. To drive terrestrial weather, sit in the Arctic cockpit. So let's take a look at what's happening up there right now. The Arctic is typically ringed by an upper-level jet stream called the polar vortex, which flows counterclockwise around the pole. When this vortex is strong, it keeps cold air up in the Arctic, and we tend to have warmer, calmer winters down in the middle latitudes. When the vortex is really strong, like back between 1989 and 1995, it can tend to blow sea ice out of the Arctic past Greenland into the Arctic Ocean. We're still dealing with the effects of that mass exodus of sea ice today. When the vortex slows down, the air pressure over the Arctic goes up, pushing the jet stream down into the lower latitudes, which can allow cold Arctic air to break loose, creating what we'd call Arctic blasts. When it gets really slow, these large waves can get stuck over areas for long periods, causing blocking events, which create the conditions for extreme weather like the Snowmageddon blizzard, which hit the U.S. East Coast back in February 2010. This graph shows the so-called Arctic Oscillation Index. When it goes into the positive, that means that the polar vortex is very strong. When it goes into the negative, that means that the polar vortex slows down, and you have the potential for these wild uh, weather patterns that we've been seeing recently. Now, if you look closely, on December 18th, the Arctic Oscillation Index swept into the negative, which means a slowing of the polar vortex. Now, the big question that uh, is facing weather science right now is who exactly is sitting in the Arctic cockpit driving these variations? Most likely, it's the sun. Now, as we've seen the past couple of weeks, the sun has been going through a very paradoxical transformation period. It may be at solar maximum right now, judging by the sunspot number, but it's a strange solar maximum. X-ray output is extremely weak right now. Indeed, two days before the Arctic Oscillation Index went negative, X-ray output dropped significantly and it's almost flatlined since then. On the other hand, if you look at the ultraviolet radiation output of the sun, it's skyrocketed almost up to the levels that we saw during the last solar maximum uh, 11 years ago. Um, indeed, over the past several days, there have been very wide variations in ultraviolet radiation. And if you just look at the sun in ultraviolet, it's very active, very dynamic. A lot is happening on the sun in the ultraviolet regime. Now, it may be that the transformations in the ultraviolet are what's driving the transformations in the Arctic right now, which means driving transformations in the weather. Now, the challenge that faces mankind is to recognize that the Arctic cockpit actually has a co-pilot seat. It's our destiny to exert command over the Arctic region and thus command over weather patterns globally. Now, man must build the so-called North American Water and Power Alliance and associated uh, large-scale development projects around the world, all of which begin up in the Arctic. Indeed, we have to develop the Arctic with these projects, which means uh, exerting control over the atmosphere, the water cycles, uh, the ocean uh, salinity, ice levels, and so forth up in the Arctic. We have to drive those with these projects in order to exert control over the rest of the globe and potentially over the solar system. We should make this the true gift that we give humanity this year. Thank you.